Welcome back to the show. Today we're talking about the NBA MVP. We're talking about how they come up with who wins it. Is it an algorithm? Is it the best player on the best team? Is it the guy that scores the most points? We're gonna find out today. It's kind of all those things. So, who votes for the NBA MVP? It's 99 broadcasters in one fan vote. You decide to some degree. You have 1% control of the vote. You have five votes, one through five. One is the most, that gets the most points. Your fifth pick gets one vote. It has the least amount of power. You total up all the points and that is your NBA MVP. So it's chosen by broadcasters or media members or journalists or whatever you want to call them. So the fans do get one vote. That is why in 2021, Derrick Rose got a vote. He only played 35 games and started only three games. But People love Derrick Rose, so he got one first pick vote. I'm gonna go over five different factors that play into the NBA MVP and how it gets chosen. Let's start with the first one, narrative. This is the aspect of the game that happens outside the court. Obviously, a guy has to be performing at the top of his powers and have a really good team to be even considered for the NBA MVP, but there is also factors outside of the game of basketball that may play into if he wins or not. What is this player experiencing that season? Is he about to break a historical record? Did he get traded to a struggling team and now put them into finals contention? Is he coming back from a slump or maybe he got injured the last season? All these things you wouldn't know if you watched an NBA season entirely on mute. A recent example of this is Nikola Jokic's 2021-2022 season where he won the MVP. The Nuggets were a sixth seed, which is not a great team, but they were missing their second and third best players, Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. So Nikola Jokic had to carry the Denver Nuggets sorry ass to the playoffs. The main reason he won though was his advanced stats. His advanced stats were crazy, but the fact that he was shorthanded was a little bit of help to put him number one in the voting. But that being said, Joel Embiid also had a little bit of narrative himself. Ben Simmons was sitting out that entire season for whatever reason. Maybe his back, maybe he didn't want to play, maybe mental health. Who knows? He didn't play at all. Joel Embiid had to carry the team during all that drama. So even he had a bit of a case for MVP due to narrative. One of the most well-known narrative MVP cases is Russell Westbrook in 2017. Westbrook won even though he had the least efficient shooting of the top five players in voting. He also had his defensive mistakes covered by Steven Adams and Victor Oladipo. Also, the Oklahoma City Thunder wasn't even that good. They were a sixth seed as well. So why did he win? If he didn't really have much of a case, why was Russell Westbrook the 2017 NBA MVP? Well, he broke Oscar Robertson's record of triple doubles. He got 42 triple doubles in a season. That was a record that no one thought was going to be broke, and he broke it. In addition to this, Kevin Durant had just left for greener pastures in Golden State. So Russell Westbrook was all alone, and he had to carry the offensive load. That's a narrative point for Russell Westbrook. Personally, it looks a little weird now. We look back at that season that he had won. Even though he wasn't the best player, looking back, he broke that record, and people gave him the MVP. It looks kind of funny now, because we know if you're chasing triple doubles, which Westbrook was doing that, you're going to get triple doubles. The next factor is team wins. The best example of this is 2005, Steve Nash winning the NBA MVP. The Suns won 62 games that year. They were tearing it up. They were really good, but Nash only averaged 15 points per game. That's incredibly low. The next player in voting was Dirk Nowitzki, who had 26 points a game. That's 11 more points a game. So was his team record enough to give a guy that was only scoring 15 points a game the MVP? No, he was also the assist leader, so he was killing it in assists. And also, the Phoenix Suns won 33 less games the season before, so his impact showed. So this was a testament to Steve Nash's impact. So even if you don't score a lot, if you're on a really good team and it's obvious that your play impacts that really good team, you're going to win the NBA MVP. Now, let's talk about advanced stats, which is a fairly new thing, but a very important thing. And season by season, player efficiency rating is becoming even more and more of an indicator of who's going to win the MVP. Since 2016, the guy that has led the league in PER has won the NBA MVP. Take a look yourself. The guy that is the most efficient is always winning the MVP. Even if you look now, who is leading in PER? It's Nikola Jokic. 
If you look at the Kia MVP ladder, who's on top? Nikola Jokic. So if you're placing a bet for who's going to win the MVP, take a look at the PER rating. Next is player history. Kobe Bryant won the MVP in 2008. Was he the best player? No, he was not. LeBron James was slightly better. He was a slightly better player. He had a little bit better stats, but Kobe was on the best team in the West. LeBron James was on the fourth best team in the East. Kobe had struggled with the same thing LeBron did years before. Kobe was the best player in the league, but he was not on a good team. Lakers were around fourth or fifth when he was the best player on the Lakers. Kobe's history played into this. The voters knew they wanted to give Kobe an MVP. They thought he deserved it. He paid his dues and this was an opportunity to give it to him, even though LeBron was the better player. Currently, I don't think there are any NBA players that the voters want to give an MVP to. The only person that would really qualify to this in my book is Kawhi Leonard, because Kawhi Leonard has won finals MVP. He's won two championships, but he has never won an MVP. But Kawhi doesn't play, so I don't think he really factors into this at all. The next is the eye test, or big moments, or a guy that you just can't get away from. He's on every billboard. He maybe brings an old franchise to prominence that wasn't really good for a really long time and changes the game. Who am I going to refer to? It's Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose won the NBA MVP in 2011. This was another case where LeBron had better stats and he was second in the East. The Bulls finished first in the East, so they finished above the Heat. This was the year after LeBron's decision. So people thought the Heat were going to be the number one in the East and it ended up being the Bulls. Chicago was on fire, no pun intended. The city loved Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose had really awesome highlights. He was explosive. He had mad handles. And he was only 22. He was posed to be the youngest NBA MVP in history. So even though most people believe that LeBron had the best season that year, it went to Derrick Rose. What's really interesting is if LeBron had won that year, he would have won five MVPs in a row, which no one has ever done before. So in conclusion, it seems that advanced stats are dictating the NBA MVP. The way I see it, how it goes every year is the media starts picking around two or three guys and then around two weeks left in the regular season, you already know who the MVP is. They still talk about the two or three guys, but there's one guy that you kind of know is going to win it. You can always tell. So it's the advanced stats, but the media talks about the advanced stats and you can kind of figure out who they're going to pick. And I think it's sort of a hive mind. You see the person kind of come, come together and get the trophy. So thank you for being here. Eat a hot dog, eat a corn dog.